Welcome to our online worship service. Uh, this is Sunday, January 7th, 2024. And we're going to be working through the liturgy from uh, day seven of Be Thou My Vision, a liturgy for daily worship by Jonathan Gibson. And so please follow along at home. Let's begin with our call to worship. Hear God call you to worship through his word. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one, another, one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Let's take a moment and let's pray this praise to God from a prayer of praise from William J. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? May we approach you with the humility which is due to your greatness and the hope that becomes your goodness. For though you are high, yet you have respect for the lowly, and though continually adored, by thrones and dominions, principalities and powers, yet you despise not the prayer of the destitute, but will hear their prayer. Our father cried unto you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not confounded. And you never said to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. Amen. Amen. Before we continue with the reading of the law, take a moment in your own homes to give God praise and thanks for all that he's brought you through this past year and all that he is doing, his wonderful character and his love for us, uh, even though he is so great and we are so small. Let's continue now with the reading of the law. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. The purpose of the law is to convict us of our sins. The law can never save us, but it can convict us and show us where we have fallen short and show us where we have need of a great Savior and the forgiveness of our sins. Let's take a moment of silence to just reflect upon our own hearts and let God convict us by his Holy Spirit where we have not loved one another, where we have not loved God. Let's take a moment to confess, and then we will read our prayer of confession. I, a poor sinful person, confess myself before you, my Lord God and Maker, that sadly I have sinned much with my senses, thoughts, words, and deeds, as you, eternal God, know very well. I regret them and beg your grace. Amen. Amen. Our only hope, being sinners, is the grace and the mercy, the forgiveness of God, the promise of his pardon for us who believe. And so let's hear these words of comfort from God, our assurance of pardon. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. It's a good time now in our service to confess what we believe uh, about the Christian faith. And there are some wonderful creeds for reflection. The Apostles' Creed, which we read once a month in church. Uh, the Nicene Creed is similar to that, but with more detail. And it's a good one for us to reflect upon here. So let's hear once again, and you can read along with us, uh, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one sin for baptism, for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And in response to our confession of faith of what we believe, let us say this praise to God from the Glory Patri. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now let us receive some instruction from one of the church's catechisms. These are the first three questions of the Westminster Shorter Catechism, which was recorded in 1647. What is the chief end of man? Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. What rule has God given to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him? The word of God, which is contained in the scripture of the Old and New Testaments, is the only rule to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him. What do the scriptures principally teach? The scriptures principally teach what man is to believe concerning God and what duty God requires of man. Well, let us go now to those scriptures and to receive instruction from the Lord. And so we will have a prayer now of illumination. Almighty, gracious Father, since your whole salvation depends on our true understanding of your holy word, grant that our hearts, freed from worldly affairs, may hear and understand your holy word with all diligence and faith, so that we may rightly discern your gracious will, cherish it, and live by it with all earnestness, to your praise and honor, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This reading from the scriptures is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. Uh, it is the final chapter that concludes the Sermon on the Mount, and it has powerful and convicting words of instruction for us all. Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite! First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which one of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. 
Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine is, and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. You'll notice in our passage that Jesus concludes this whole section on the Sermon on the Mount with this parable of the one who builds his house on a rock versus the one who builds it on the sand. And he warns us to not go the, the wide way that leads to destruction, but to take the narrow path. And the narrow path is those who hear his words and put them into practice and apply them. The easy way is to hear his words and to move on with your life with no reflection, with no changes, no understandings, no points of application. And so I want you to take this time with yourself, with your families, whoever is with you, to read that chapter again, Matthew chapter 7, and reflect on particular points in which you need to put things into practice here. Maybe you have been judgmental and need to do more self-reflection about the troubles in your own life. Maybe you need to attend more to prayer and to, to bring your request to God, to be a little wiser in how you discern who is it that advises you and, and teaches you the ways and be wearing of beware of the false prophets and and such and to attend to our hearts but to really pray to attend to his word and to apply it and to keep working at that now, that is the narrow way that is the way that leads to life and the way of a follower of christ so let's take some time now with your families to reflect upon it again read it again and, and speak to consider those ways that are truly convicting and where you need to make some changes in your own life. Well, at this time in our service, we'll move to a prayer of intercession. We're going to pray for ourselves, pray for our families, uh, for our church family, and we'll pray for the world as well. And leading us into that, we will have first our prayer of intercession. Uh, this is a prayer of St. Patrick. I bind myself today to the power of God to guide me, to the might of God to uphold me, to the wisdom of God to teach me, the eye of God to watch over me, the ear of God to hear me, the word of God to speak to me, the way of God to lie before me, the host of God to defend me. Amen. Amen. And as you go off to pray together and to pray for those requests that are on your heart and intercede for one another, let's uh, pray together the, the Lord's Prayer. And um, that will be our final prayer. And thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And let us close now with a benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.